Sorry about that. My, I had to offload a bunch of apps so I could have some storage on my phone. Anyway, picking off of that story, I kept on missing appointments, but yet every time I would try, they would be, the receptionist and the therapist would be very kind of mean about it, and I couldn't get back onto therapy. And so, which to me wasn't very helpful, obviously, for obvious reasons. And I was very angry and upset about it at the time. But thinking back at it, I'm like, they probably just didn't have enough therapists. Because, again, mental health, not a priority in this country. <laughs> so, and I know the same thing happens at my, the sister school. Uh, I went to BYU-Idaho, and BYU has the same problem, too, where there just is not enough mental health, mental health help in school and so then I got out of college on medication but still not feeling the greatest <laughs> and and then at that point I had to have my own insurance because um, this is before the era of Obamacare where you could be on your parents insur insurance until you were 26 that law came about when I was like three months before I turned 26. So I had three months to get all this stuff done. And it was all physical stuff to deal with a lot of the mental health stuff or um, physical health problems that I had to deal with. But nothing was really done for mental health. Um, and then I was just crap out of luck without any insurance for quite a while. Um, I was able to get on some type of assistance where I could at least pay for, go to a, like a discounted health clinic and get discounted drugs because I was still working at the time. Uh, but, you know, just bare bones. Um, so no sort of mental health care coverage to deal, can deal with the things. Still dealing with unresolved trauma. Um, also, I should point out that I, I've been hit by cars multiple times, which is um, some of the PTSD. I also have the complex PTSD from getting beat up and bullied all the time, um, <laughs> which is fun. <laughs> this is so hard to talk about um, and try to think of any coherent narrative. And also, like I said, I was diagnosed with ADD and I had a medication when I was a kid. But I haven't had been on medication for a while um, since then. You know, I'm 36. And so my executive functioning is just jack crap. So, however, when I, I think I was, 2013, I finally got a job that had really good insurance. Um, and while I was, I was at that job for four years, and during that time I got a lot of surgeries, um, major surgeries that I had needed. Um, but could just never afford to get on my income. Um, and with the type of health insurance I had, and I finally decided to go get autism testing because that was something the first time it was mentioned. I think, well, when I was a kid, my mom thought I had it, but it wasn't really something that was discussed with me. But it wasn't until I was in college and I had an aunt who talked about who worked with autistic children it's like I you display classic signs of at the time she called it Asperger's because that was um, before they changed the uh, definition to put it all in a blanket term of autism spectrum disorder um, it's like you should get tested but at the time again in college no money after college no money no insurance um, finally on insurance at 30 I get it done and then she's like okay here's some resources that you can check out to help you out check all the resources none of them are for adults with high function oh quote unquote high functioning autism which again is a misnomer because yeah maybe you have higher cognitive abilities and physical abilities than some other people on the autism spectrum, but you still have, uh, there's other ways that you don't function. 
And part one of those is executive dysfunction, which I suffer from greatly. And so the past 36, six years is me knowing some things about myself that I, and you know, thankfully nowadays you can, there's lots of online presence where you can look up and find other people who kind of go through the same things as you and so you can commiserate. But as far as having actual programs to help you to learn how to cope with your autism, I just feel like there's very little, or you have to have money and don't have money. <laughs> um, I'm currently not working right now because I've my physical disabilities that I have, in addition to my mental disability, has gotten to the point where I just I just can't work. I can't sit for very long. I can't um, stand for very long. Can barely walk. Kind of those kind of things. And I'm trying to apply for disability, but um, which is a whole another tangent I could go off of the problems I'm having. But to focus solely on my mental health journey and trying to get help. I just feel like I haven't had any support um, from a medical and psychiatric thing. And part of it is just not being resources. And part of that is also me because of my mental and physical disabilities being able to help myself. Like because of my lack of executive function, I just, I have a hard time making appointments for myself. I have a hard time being on the phone. And you know, there's some things that I can muster up the courage to do, but it takes forever. And I'm really like, why don't you just do it? Why don't you just do it? And then I just don't understand that in the mind, it's hard for me. And I'm like, I know. And then you see all those, you know, kind of ableist um, memes, about like uh, people call it inspiration porn. We're like, well, I had disability and I overcame it. And so you should overcome it too. But we're not taking into account that a lot of these people who are overcoming these, come, come, overcoming these things and being successful and fulfilling their dreams of, in life and just being not hot messes like I am, they have money to get support. Money to get support. It's about services. They have uh, ways to get around their disabilities because they have support. And I just feel like at this point I don't have any support. I don't know how to help myself. Um, and there's just not any services where I am to even help me. <laughs> um, I'm on Medicaid right now and I know they do have mental health services, but I know here in Utah the waiting list is forever because I just don't have enough psychiatrists and counselors, at least to, um, at the state level. I mean, there's plenty of counselors for if you, you know have insurance or um, if you just want to pay out of pocket and you know spend a lot of money, but that's not an option for me because I don't work. <laughs> and so I'm just getting really frustrated and I'm also dealing with the trying to apply for disability, but they make the process of the process of applying for disability is so difficult and so what's the word demoralizing <laughs> and thankfully one of my autism superpowers is being stubborn <laughs> and so I'm gonna keep at it and I have a lawyer but I'm on my third denial I'm supposed to get a hearing and I'm also trying to get aid through the state to at least have some money but they're having me go jump through all these hoops that it's really difficult for me from a mental health standpoint because it requires me to plan ahead and to have executive function, which I don't. And I also don't have somebody to help me out. I do live with my parents, they're older, but that is its own thing. Like I'm grateful that they are, you know, letting me live here and, you know, supporting me in that way. But as far as meeting my emotional needs, I can't go through to them for help. One thing my dad is, is, I think he has mental health issues, but he's untreated and he doesn't really kind of buy into the whole, um, <clears throat> he's just one of those grin and bear it kind of people. And so I don't go to him because he will, um, 
he doesn't see me as disabled, essentially, and thinks I can do things that I can't do. And sometimes I can do them, I'll have good days, and I can, you know, get as much as I can done when I'm like, oh, I don't feel like shit. <laughs> but then I do too much, and then I pay for it the next day, blah, blah. And the problem I have with my mom, she is a confirmed diagnosis of depression and anxiety. But again, she's from the generation where you just grin and bear it and you just tough it out. And so when I try to talk to her about things that are bothering me, she's the type of person that wants to, one, try to fix it. <laughs> Which, one, really, I just want someone to talk to about the things that are bothering me. And I get it because I know... The things, the complex issues that I have, I really do just need to talk about it with a therapist and I don't want to, you know, the things I need to talk about with her are things that she shouldn't have to process, I guess. If that make, makes sense, I had a friend one, to, once tell me that you can, you put too much pressure on a chair, it breaks. And so I don't try to talk about it with her because when I don't want to overburden her because she herself has depression and anxiety but also because she also is always she's trying to fix me um and sometimes I just need something to listen and also she's also the type of person who makes it she guilts you and she shames you saying um if that makes sense and makes it seem like your problems that you're experiencing are your own fault and uh, that's not helpful because I already feel crappy about myself to begin with. And so her saying like, well, if you just did this, then you would just, it would be just magically better. But the things she's asking me to do to make it better are things that I have a hard time doing. <laughs> um, so all this to say, one, trying to ch this country needs to, you know, change their attitudes about mental health and, like, you know, not see people as crazy and, you know, not do the whole... In Sorry, my hair is just... It's bothering me. Part of my... One of the problems with my depression and anxiety that I have is that I, I know a lot of people experience this where they just don't take care of themselves and my hair and my teeth and... You know, I do bathe regularly, but there, there are some places that because of my also because of my physical disabilities that I just can't reach and just don't get clean, and so I just feel bad at myself because my hygiene is just not where I would want it to be, and I don't want to be out in public and la la la, la and <sighs> sorry, <laughs> I lost my tennis off. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> But and, the, and then also the fact that mental health care, you know, there's the stigmas, but there's also lack of programs, both for adults and for children. Um, the cost prohibitiveness of getting help. Because I'm like, I'm sure, like, almost, sometimes I feel like I'm like, do I need like a caretaker? It's just specific to my physical and mental needs to help me keep on track. That would be great. Um, but it probably would cost a lot of money. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just so frustrated right now. And so not having the stigma and then not having the cost prohibitiveness of getting help. And then not, and then having actually having programs, and then actually, um, I don't think of what programs, but well, first off, not even just mental health care, physical health care here in this in this country is a joke. Like people, you know, delay getting care and getting things done because they don't have insurance. Like I am, wouldn't be, I, I'm someone who believes that we should have universal health care. Um, <clears throat> so that you, if you have a problem, you can get help. Bada bing, bada boom. It's worked in other countries. 
um, even if we did it just to so like, you know, did it at a state level and every state kind of took care of their own version of it and then had maybe a little bit of federal backup, like there's ways to make it work. And like stupid right wing people in, in the country, you know, not wanting it to be that way. <sighs> but I also want more research done into autism manifesting in women. Um, so they know how to help, but I'm just so screwed up right now, even with various therapies that I've had throughout the year. And I'm like, if I had had therapy when I was a young child after, you know, getting beat up, if I had therapy after getting hit by all these vehicles when I was a kid, if I had therapy, um, <clears throat> after my autism diagnosis, if they had even thought that I had autism as a kid, like, you know, there, I know in some, my, at least my uh, nieces and nephews schools, they do sometimes have school counselors and you can get therapy, but they, there's like one counselor for an entire school district and like it takes so long to see one and they don't have a lot of time with the children, but So for me, there are so many points along my mental health journey where someone, an adult, could have intervened and helped me learn how to cope. But there wasn't. And my mom tried. She tried so hard. But she also was also trying to deal with all my physical ailments that I had and also trying to take care of, you know, five other children. And also sometimes there was points in her growing up. Sometimes she was a stay-at-home mom, sometimes she had to work. And so she she did the best she could. Like, I'm not blaming my mother. I think she has done and wonderful things for me. There's things that she's taught me and tried to help me with to make me a better functioning adult. Because um, she, she recognized I had a problem. No, none of the other doctors did. But she recognized that something was going on, but nobody believed her. Maybe because she was a woman, maybe it's just because, also, maybe because, you know, they thought, oh, only boys have autism, which is not true. So, I don't blame her, but at the same time, there's certain behaviors that she also exhibited to me, where she was very mean and very firm, that also didn't help me in my mental health journey, because there's a lot of guilt and shame, like, oh, just, why can't I do it? You should just be able to do it, which doesn't help me at all. <laughs> so I think I've covered all the points that I wanted to cover. Um, if anybody is wa going to watch this, um, if you have any suggestions of what I could do, um, I'm all ears because I, I just don't know. I am going to try and get on some ADD medication and uh, see if that maybe helps because right now I have to cope with my because I'm on multiple medications that make me drowsy, as well as dealing with the executive dysfunction. So I, in the past, well, I've just used caffeine to cope, which is a stimulant, and I know a lot of ADD medications are stimulants, and I'm like, well, would it be better for me to be on a medication? <clears throat> I'm trying to get my sleep schedule back 